Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis chapter 20. And Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country, going down south again, and dwelt between Kadesh and Shur. You can find these on a Bible map. And sojourned in Gerar. Now this is where Isaac is going to dwell. And this is where God tells Isaac, no, you don't go any further. And Abraham said of Sarah, his wife, Notice how God keeps, the Holy Spirit keeps putting that in there. She is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent. Now here's the thing right here. Okay, we're gonna, when we get later on to Isaac, Abimelech. Well, the guy can't be this old. So Abimelech in the Bible from 20 and then when we come across an Isaac, that's a title. That would be... If it was America, it would be, and the president, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, Abimelech, king of Gira. It's not a man's name. It's a title. Queen Elizabeth of England. So Abimelech, king of some and people have problems with that. How come this guy? Is, no, it's, Abimelech, king of Gira, sent and took Sarah. Satan's working again. Hey, see that woman over there? Isn't she nice? Isn't she sweet? Go take her. And this is after God has renamed Abram, renamed Sarai, and he's setting the thing for Isaac. And Abraham hands his wife over and says, yeah, she's my sister. Satan is trying to stop the godly seed the holy seed of Jesus Christ. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night. What about the heathen? Didn't God send an angel to Cornelius? Didn't God somehow kind of rapturally send Philip to the Ethiopian eunuch? Don't worry about the heathen. God will take care of those who are truly want to do right. And we can see here at Bimelech wants to do right. And he's done right so far. He sees his woman. Oh, you, you, your sister? Wow, okay. Just watch his attitude. Watch this heathen guy's attitude. And said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man. Imagine God coming to you in the middle of the night. You're dead. And I'm God. And you know it's God. For the woman... Which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. Sarah, his wife, it's a man's wife. But Imlik had not come near her, no flesh joining flesh. And said, Lord, wilt thou slay also a righteous nation? Said he not to me, she is my sister, and that's 100% true. Abimelech is pleading with God in innocency, saying, That's what he told me, God. And she, even she herself, said, He is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands have I done. It. And it's a very much true statement. They both confirmed that a sister, and since it was his sister, I took her. I haven't touched her yet. 
and you're telling me that it's his wife. And God said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart. I know what your heart is. I know your heart was pure. You had no idea they were lying to you. And you did the manly thing. You, Hey, I like her. I took her. For I, God, also withheld thee from sin. Now there are things, and this is a complicated verse, because there are times that God will prevent us from actions that will harm us. And, but there are times when we're going to decide to sin and go with, and God's going to let us do it, our own free will. The reason why God has stopped what has happened in 20 is God has promised to Abraham and to Sarah that you two are going to have a child in your old age. And I don't want people to say, well, it's Abimelech's baby. And that would be the rumor. Imagine if Abimelech would have any kind of sexual relations with Sarah. Imagine what today would be written about these two. You know, you can go to, online, or to, if they have video stores anymore today, you can find a movie about David and Bathsheba. It's there. I've seen the movie. I watched it. And God told David, because i got to kill that baby because, you know, you've caused the Gentiles to mock me. And God has to protect Sarah because Sarah is in the line of Jesus Christ. And Abimelech's own statement is, hey, listen, I, I was innocent. I had no idea. And I did not touch her. So if somebody would come up to you and say, well, yeah, Sarah had relations because her, her husband... You can go back in the Bible and Pharaoh, you can go back to Abimelech in the chapter and verse 8. No, there was no relation out of those men's lips. Written and recorded by the Holy Spirit. God protected him to protect her. Isn't that interesting? For I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Well, did you just see that? Did he know that they were married? No, he didn't. But God said, I withheld you from sinning. He may have, could have checked a little more into Sarah and find out, ask the, the servants of Abraham, ask the workers of Abraham, is that truly, are they truly sisters? See, when, when, you, when you get a woman, you got to you gotta check her out. Against me, therefore, suffered I allow, suffer means allow, suffer I thee not to touch her. But if you could have, if God didn't intervene, this is that holy one race of people called Israelites, called Jews. And Satan is intervening. And God and Satan are having a battle. And you watch these women that are in the line of Jesus Christ. And you watch how Satan attacks them. And God has to do things to make it right. Now therefore restore the man his wife. For he is a prophet. Okay, mark Abraham down as a prophet. But look what he's done to his wife. We'll get to that in a minute. You know, kind of. Slid the story, but we'll get to that in a minute. And he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. Well, there's a death, death sentence. And if thou restore her not, here's free will. Know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. Free will. Let her go back to Abraham. You're going to live. If you don't, I'm going to kill you. This is the same thing we do on the streets. Believe on Jesus Christ to be saved or anything else or don't believe and go to hell. That's the free will of God. Therefore Abimelech rose early in the morning and called all his servants and told all these things in their ears. And the men were sore afraid. I'd be sore afraid too if God spoke to me and said, you're dead. 
And then they called Abraham and said unto him, What hast thou done unto us? And what have I offended thee, that thou hast brought on me and on my kingdom a great sin, adultery, great sin? This is a heathen. What about the heathen? They know better. It's in their heart. It's in their conscience, the Bible says. Though they are not the chosen people. What about the heathen? All right. Abimelech doesn't have Jesus Christ. He doesn't have God Jehovah. But he will be judged by the books. And when the books are open to this case in, in Genesis chapter 20, it will find that he had an opportunity to commit adultery. And he did it. And he feared God and did what God said. That's a plus. Man's heart. Listen, I remember as a little boy going to public schools in the backyard with my friend Kevin. We would lay on the ground, look up at the scars and say, hey, God made them. How wonderful they are. I grew up as a little boy fearing thunderstorms and then liking thunderstorms. And saying, That's God made. It is in our heart. Romans 1 says you have to be taught out of your heart that there's no God. The Bible says a man that says there's no God, he's foolish. And thou has de and what has the and thou hast done deeds unto me that ought not to be done. And the boom said unto Abraham, What sawest thou that thou hast done this thing? Why did you do this thing? And Abraham said, Behold, I thought, surely the fear of God is not in this place. Is the fear of God in this place or is not in this place? By Abimelech's action. It's in it. <laughs> And the only thing I reason why I, I, you see the Abimelech rose up in the early in the morning, God already told you it was a dream. I have a feeling that if he wasn't sleeping and God spoke to him, I think he would have got out of that bed that night and taken care of matters. This guy is afraid. And he calls all his people and says, You won't believe what happened to me last night. Surely the fear of God is not in this place. That's wrong. And they will slay me for my wife's sake. Well, 21, Abraham's alive. 22, Abraham's alive. They didn't slay him. Abraham lied. And yet, indeed, she is my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. She became my wife. Look, look how Abraham just hung himself right. Well, yeah, we're half sister, half brother, but she is my wife. That's what God's been pointing to ever since. God honors the wife more than sister. God honors a wife more than being a daughter of somebody. When, when a woman takes a husband, you, you're done with your father. That's it. That is now your husband. You take your husband's name. God honors the marriage. And the marriage today is a mockery. Allowing two men or two women to get married. You're mocking what God has ordained. And when you make jokes about marriage. Oh. You realize marriage is one of the first things that happened to mankind. When he put a man and a woman on this planet. The first thing that happened to him. They got married. And God, Jesus Christ said, what man has put asunder, let, I mean, what, what God has joined, let man not put asunder. Be, be careful how you speak about the, the husband and wife. And it came to pass when God caused me to wander from my father's house, we've already read that, that I said unto her, this is, this, this is thy kindness, which thou shalt show unto me, at every place where we shall come, Say of me, he is my brother. So Abraham told her from the beginning. Genesis 11, Genesis 12. Since God called them out, dear, just tell them we're brother and sister. And Abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servants and woman servants and gave them unto Abraham and restored him Sarah, his wife. That's kind of weird that Abraham both times got rich off this event. I don't know why. Only thing I could think that here Abimelech sees Abraham as a man of God and he's offering offering. But then you got men servants and women servants with it. It's not just animals for sacrifice. But I can't explain that. 
And Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before thee. Dwell where it pleaseth thee. Well, it's not where God wants them. And unto Sarah he said, Behold, I have given thy brother. Look at sar You know, people say sarcasm is a sin. There's sarcasm. I've given thy brother. <laughs> I love when the Bible speaks sarcastic because that's what I do. I've seen even God and Jesus Christ speak sarcasm. I have given thy brother a thousand piece of silver. Behold, he is to thee a covering of the eyes, a veil. And when you see through the Bible, there is a veil of a woman who is a virgin. And there is a veil of a woman who, who is a wife. There is a veil of a woman, a harlot. The veil that the women wore spoke of who, what they were. A thousand pieces of silver, behold, he is to thee a covering of the eyes. And unto all that are with thee, your whole company, and with all other, thus she was reproved, and reproved means to be blamed. See, he's... Not only sarcasm, but he scolded her. So Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech, uh -oh, and his wife, and his maidservants. And they bare children, for the Lord had fast closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech, because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Now had he done this, and not giving Sarah up, Isaac would not have ever dealt with Abimelech. Abimelech survives, the people survive to even when Isaac goes down there because they obeyed God. That night, God closed up all the wombs. There would have been no more children. Abimelech would have been dead. And that clan, that city, that people, the people of Gerar would have slowly died out. By not having, you don't have babies, you're not going to have a population. The more babies are born in your city, in your country, well, the more people you got, you got to survive. Right now, as far as my my personal family, my grandpa's last name has died out because. He had two daughters and no sons to carry that name on. The daughters got married and took on the, the husband's names. And there's no name to carry my grandpa's last name on. It don't carry with me because I'm Hayward. It don't carry to my brother. It's Hayward. With no male children, there's no one to carry that name. And then the name dies and the people die and the city dies and who you were die. There's no more Babylonians today because they died out. And there have been many clans, many people who have died out because lack of having children. And one of the things of marriage that God set before Abraham, I mean before Adam and Eve, is to multiply and replenish the work. Make billy bees. So. Uh, 